you've got your tool palette here, arrow to select and move things around, drum stick to input drum notes, rubber to rub them out, and there's a magnifying glass, a zoom tool, and a line tool, and things like that. Um, what else have we got? Oh yeah, there's the view info row here, button which shows you the info if I put in a note. Um, whoops, not that loop, not now Arthur. Put a, a note in and it shows me the info here. I can use the mouse wheel to watch the watch the velocity down here in the here, so look, velocity, yeah, in the controller area. If I, if I have with the arrow key that note selected and I just put my mouse over the velocity and scroll down. You'll see the, you'll see this velocity going down. Yeah, or up. It's a lot easier actually to get the, the tool than just draw it up and down like that. Yeah, with the, with the drumstick. Um, but you can also do things like um, change the start position. If I go over the sub, uh, these little subdivision of beats, whoops, wrong way, I can make it move back tiny little increments at a time. You can see that scrolling up here. Yeah? Or if I go to the subdivisions, or the beat division here, I can make it move in sixteenths, because it's uh, set in the quantize here to sixteenths. Okay. And uh, so you can adjust things um, using the mouse wheel in this, in this uh, info view area here but you don't need it in to work to be honest and you've got um, a solo instrument which is whichever row I've selected here if I hit the solo instrument you will see all the other ones this is the mute column are muted apart from that one and that's as long as this stays down I can keep changing the drum row or instrument row as they call it that I'm listening to and the others just automatically mute as I jump around and listen to my different drums yeah. Uh, you've got that. Uh, you've got solo edit as well, which means just like in key edit, for this whole editor, if I click that solo editor, I can only hear this part I'm actually working on. Um, everything else back on the arrange page that's playing within the arrangement at that point in the song gets muted, and all I hear is just what's just what I'm editing in this in this part. Okay, and uh, you can mute individual channels just manually like that by muting them. Okay, so left area grid, right area arrange uh, settings. Let's drag that back. There's one other thing to look at that's kind of really pertinent at this point to get down first. And uh, we've got this global quantize. Now, every row in our drum map which pertains to a note number, yeah, um, can have an independent quantize triplets, dotted notes, sixteenths, whatever. Okay. Um, and as long as this global quantize is off, unselected, it, each row takes its quantize from the setting for the row there. But I can switch in a global quantize and assign that to whatever I like. And that then sets the quantize for the whole map and overrides these individual quantizes. Okay? Okay, so that's... We've looked... Oh, yeah, well, and well, of course you've got your controller area down here, which should be defaulted to velocity, so when you put notes in, you can quickly... To go to that row and when you select a row for a drum you only see the notes in that row which is really cool because if you had two notes here on the same start position uh, it would be harder because the velocity for both would be on the same the same um, uh, division here on the quantized vertical line for the 16th so one thing that's cool about drum map is it isolates the, the note velocity down here to whichever row is selected, which means I can select this note and quickly tweak its velocity, select the note underneath it here, and I'm, I, don't, I don't have them both overlapped and have a problem grabbing the one I want and adjusting its velocity. Okay, so that's that area. Let's look at this right-hand column, because this is the key to drum map, really. Um, drum map was something Steinberg invented back in Atari days. And uh, it's a really clever system. And the way it works is this: your drum map is sort of like a, a, a remapper. Right? It's a, it it sits between. If you've let's go back to the arrange page. If you've assigned drum map to a MIDI track, your drum map sits between 
you're in your input MIDI ports on the system and your out MIDI ports on the system and your route to VST instruments uh, from any incoming MIDI data. So incoming MIDI data comes through your MIDI assigned input here for this track through the drum map, out of the drum map to be stored if recorded onto into a part or to pass through to an external MIDI device or to a VST instrument. Okay, so we go back into the drum map. This is what's clever about it. It's divided into rows, and these pitch, this first column pitch, these can't be altered because that's the storage pitch. Okay? But further across, you have an in and an out note for every single row. This can be different. So, for example, let's say, where does this come in useful? Well, let's say you are working from your MIDI keyboard. and um, you've got some percussion instruments, you've got a set of congas in your drum machine or your drum software or whatever and let's say for the sake of argument you can't change the MIDI note numbers of those of those four percussion hand drums, let's say a set of conga slaps and hits yeah. but you want to play a nice fast conga pattern on your master keyboard and um, the notes in the drum machine for the congas are assigned to white keys okay? Now you know how hard it is when you're playing a pattern to jump with your fingers between the white keys and not hit the adjacent white key because they're right next door to each other. It's much, much easier when you're programming MIDI drums on a keyboard to assign drums to black notes because there's a physical space. The black notes stand up above the white keys. And when you jump from one to the other black note, there's a nice physical space between the keys and it's much, much harder to accidentally hit the adjacent key and programming things like tom rolls or percussion patterns is much easier. So you could, for example, um, let's say these were your toms here. Um, high tom, I'll just rename them, medium tom and low tom. Okay, let's say for the sake of argument. Uh, here they are, high tom, medium tom, low tom. And your drum machine has them assigned to whatever keys, but you want them assigned to the three black keys that are clustered together um, F sharp to um, what would it be A sharp yeah so all you have to do is set the out note uh, sorry the in note here the first one to F sharp one the second one to G sharp one and the third one to A sharp one and now when I play the three black keys that are in the group of three on the keyboard the incoming note will come into this row and then I can assign the out note here to the note number in my drum box that the actual sound is on fixed here yeah? so when I play these three black keys I can assign them to drums in my drum machine and that way I can have the black keys play them and the same can go for drum pads if you've got some drum pads you can route those to different in so that uh, different in notes from your drum pads are recognized by the drum map and pass them through to the appropriate out notes okay so what was that C sharp to well I've got to put these back now haven't I um, that would be D2 and D sharp 2 and put this back to what it was which was E2 okay so that's that's basically what the drum map does it remaps you can you can assign in notes and out notes um, but whatever input and output note you're using it will store the note when it's when it records and saves on this fixed pitch note here okay another advantage of where this can be really useful is uh, for example you're co-working with somebody else or a client or something comes in with a drum pattern they've made they did it in their sequence and they've got all these different note numbers that don't pertain to your setup you just import their MIDI drum part, let's say it's got all these sounds like this and let's say they've put their kick drum on something like C2 and there's their kick drum playing 4 to the floor you want the kick drum to be playing C1 then just change that to C1 and it will play this note on C1 regardless of where it's stored in the MIDI pattern they bring to you yeah? so the, think of the drum map as a patching device for routing MIDI notes from whichever input key you want to whichever output key you want and you can even change the channel.